Sexual Reproduction in Flowering Plants Flowers are the parts meant for sexual reproduction in plants. They attract pollinators with their colors, scents and shapes. In this video, we are going to see the formation and development of flowers. Now let's see the formation of flower. We all know that a flower is formed from a bud. A bud, it grows, develops into a flower. But from where does this bud come from? It comes from meristematic tissue. But which factors trigger these changes? Change of meristem to bud and bud to flower. Here we have three factors. They are sunlight, temperature and hormones. In this, the sunlight and temperature, these two are external factors. Whereas hormones, it is internal. It is internal factor. So these factors are responsible for the formation of floral bud and from there to flower. And here a single floral bud, if the stem is having a single floral bud, it grows into a single flower, solitary flower. Whereas in case the stem produces an inflorescence bud, a cluster of buds, a group of buds, then these inflorescence buds grow into an inflorescence. Inflorescence means a bunch of flowers. Now let us look at the reproductive parts of the flower. So bisexual flowers, they contain male and female reproductive parts. Andrisium, this is the male reproductive part of the flower and gynesium is the female reproductive part. So andrisium, it consists of stamens. Andrisium consists of stamens. Each stamen is made up of two parts, anther and filament. This is the filament. So anther and filament. It makes a stamen. So all the stamens together called as andrisium. And next female part that is gynesium. Gynesium, it consists of pistil. Some flowers will have only one pistil. Some flowers will have many pistils. Many pistils. So this is one pistil, many pistils. Here we have only one pistil. Let us see the parts of the pistil. The top of the pistil is stigma. And the long tube that is extended downwards that is style and here at the bottom it has got the ovary and these ones are called as ovules. So this is the female reproductive part of the flower. Now let us see the reproductive parts of the flower. Now let us look at the male reproductive part. Male reproductive part of the flower is called andrisium. Andrisium means all the stamens. So each stamen consists of two parts that is anther and filament. Here we can see that anther and filament. If we look at the structure of the anther, anther is bilobed. It has got two lobes. We can see here, if you draw a line like this here, this is one lobe and this is one lobe. And each lobe contain two theca. Here we can see this is one theca, this is another theca. So each lobe contain two, two here, two here. Total four theca are present. So here in the theca, we can see that microsporangium, this is the microsporangium, microsporangium. So this microsporangium, so here each microsporangium turns into a pollen sac. So in an anther, there will be total four pollen sacs. So this microsporangium, it develops into pollen sacs. Now let's see the filament. The filament, it is attached to the thalamus in some flowers. It is attached to the thalamus here. But in some flowers, the filament of the stamen is attached to the petal. Petal. It attaches to petals in some flowers. Next, we have the microsporangium. So let us see what are the different types of cells present inside this microsporangium, cells inside the anther. So this microsporangium, and this is the location we have taken this particular section of this microsporangium it is enlarged here here we can see the different layers of cells in this so this microsporangium it has got four layers of cells that are protecting the inner sporogenous tissue this is the sporogenous tissue inside this particular one is the sporogenous tissue and this tissue is protected by four layers of different cells See the outermost layer that is epidermis that is one epidermis the outermost layer it gives protection 
to the inner cells and second one endothelium second one is endothelium so this is which is highlighted in the green color that is endothelium it supports dehiscence opening of the anther so when the pollen grains are completely formed and when it is ready to split and open so that splitting is called as dehiscence and for that purpose this endothelium is useful and the next one middle layers that is three middle layers they provide additional protection and support that is the function of middle layers and next one fourth one tapetum tapetum it nourishes the developing pollen grains so here the pollen grains will be formed and so this tapetum it nourishes the pollen grains the tapetum has got different uh, features it has got dense cytoplasm the cytoplasm is very dense and they have got more than one nucleus here we can see two nuclei so these tapetal cells they have dense cytoplasm and they have more than one nucleus and this layer provides nourishment to this inner sporogenous tissue so this sporogenous tissue is protected by four layers they are the epidermis endothelium middle layers and tapetum so this sporogenous tissue it has group of cells called as pollen mother cells all these cells are called as pollen mother cells pollen mother cells they are also called as microspore mother cells they are also called as microspore mother cells pmc pollen mother cell or microspore mother cell so these cells they develop into pollen grains so that process the process in which pollen grains are formed from this pollen mother cells is called as microsporogenesis microsporogenesis is the process in which the microspore mother cells they develop into pollen grains now let us see the formation of pollen grains so what is this process called as microsporogenesis this is the process in which the pollen grains are formed so here this is the sporogenous tissue of the microsporangium this whole thing is the microsporangium and here these cells are sporogenous tissue and this is pollen mother cell so we have taken one cell out here pollen mother cell this is also called as microspore mother cell microspore mother cell or pollen mother cell so in the process of microsporogenesis the pollen mother cell it turns into a microspore tetrad microspore tetrad it's called as tetrad because it has got four cells in that so this transformation takes place by meiosis cell division so here the meiosis cell division takes place and one pollen mother cell gives rise to four microspores so four microspores are embedded in one cell this is microspore tetrad later they develops into pollen grains so when this microspore tetrad develops into a pollen grain when these conditions favor like when anther matures and when the anther dehydrates when the anther is matured and it is dehydrated then this microspore tetrad it develops into these microspores individual microspores develops into pollen grains so now these pollen grains they get separated and they are ready for release usually the pollen grains that are formed in this microsporogenesis they will be in two celled stage so each pollen grain it contain two cells this is one cell and this is one cell so in this big vegetative cell here we have generative cell this is the vegetative cell so this is called as two celled stage but sometimes in some cases the pollen grains they develop further to form three celled stage so in some plants the pollen grains are released in three celled stage in some plants the pollen grains are released in two cell stage now let us see the different parts of this pollen grain now let us look at the structure of the pollen grain what are the different parts of the pollen grain and what are their um, functions so this is exine exine this is the outer covering hard outer covering which is resistant to heat acids and alkali so it is resistant to heat acids and alkali it gives protection to the inner parts it is made up of a special material special substance called as sporopollenin sporopollenin is a kind of special material that gives this protection to the inner parts of the pollen grain so it is present in the hard 
outer covering. So the hard outer covering that is the XN consists of a material called as poropolenin. And the next layer, the inner layer is called as intine. The outer one is called as exine and the inner one is called as intine. It is made up of cellulose and pectin. These are the complex carbohydrates. The cellulose and pectin are the complex carbohydrate. And here the exine, it is completely covered by the material sporopollenin but here there is some gap where sporopollenin is not present. So this is called as germ pore. So here the sporopollenin is absent. Why? Why it is absent here? Because when the pollen grain germinates, this is the location from which the pollen tube is produced out. So we know that the pollen tube is produced out to deposit the male cells into the female reproductive part. So the pollen tube generation takes place at the germ pore. So exine, intine and germ pore. Let us see the inner components. So the pollen grain has got two cells. This is the two celled stage of a pollen grain. It has got two cells. One vegetative cell and two generative cell. So the vegetative cell is big. It is big. And the vegetative cell, it has got a vegetative nucleus which is bigger in size and irregularly shaped. So we can see that the nucleus is irregularly shaped and it is bigger in size. And the vegetative cell, it is bigger in size and it has got abundant food reserve. It has got food reserve. And the second cell present in this pollen grain is generative cell. Generative cell is in spindle shape. We can see that this cell is in spindle shape and it is floating in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell. So the generative cell is floating in the vegetative cell. So here in the pollen grain we see two cells, one vegetative cell and the other one is generative cell. So this is the structure of pollen grain. So now let us see the problems and uses with the pollen grains. So pollen grains are very important for the fertilization. They are the male gametes that helps in the sexual reproduction of the flowering plants. But there are some problems and there are some general uses with the pollen. Let us see what are those. So the problems are respiratory allergies. These pollen grains are very minute and when certain people breathe these pollen grains, they irritate their respiratory tissues and cause respiratory allergies and conditions like asthma and bronchitis. So which leads to sneezing and coughing and such kind of health issues are caused by this pollen. And there are certain uses also with this pollen. In western countries, the pollen is used as a food supplement. They claim there are so many health benefits from this pollen and they consume the pollen for immunity and for better athletic performance. They use the pollen for race horses for a better performance. Mostly they are used in the western countries in the form of powder, in the form of pills and syrups. They use the pollen as the supplements. These are the uses of the pollen grains. Now let's see the viability of the pollen grains. What is this viability? Viability of pollen means the capability of pollen to get mature and then fertilize. The capability of the pollen to get mature and then fertilize. So the pollen grains, they'll have the capability to fertilize. But there is certain limit, time duration for that. So that is called as viability duration. So after that duration, the pollen is not active. It cannot fertilize. So what is the viability duration of pollen? It is different in different species. For example, in rice and wheat, it is 30 minutes. Whereas in plants, solanaceae and rosaceae and leguminaceae, in these cases, it is for few months. For few months. That is the viability duration of pollen. But however, the pollen grains can be stored for long term, that is for years, by using cold storage, storage of pollen in liquid nitrogen, cryogenic. So the pollen grains, when they are stored at minus 196 degrees Celsius at this temperature, they can be stored for years. So this is about the viability and storage of pollen grains. Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please share this video with your friends. Please subscribe to Great Booster channel. Press the bell icon to get all the latest updates. Check the description.